Final thought, okay? I come from Detroit, Michigan, okay? There's not exactly a lot of people at Warden that come from our part of the woods, right? Or Maine, right? Not a lot of people that come from Maine uh, to Warden, right? This is a picture of one of the Detroit Red Wings hockey players. His name is Johan Franzen, okay? He's referred to as the Mule. That's his nickname, okay? I don't know, maybe the beard or something leads you to think that he's like a mule. Who knows, okay? This is a big hockey player, big, thick guy, okay? 6'4", 240 pounds, really strong athlete. And Johan here is hoisting the Stanley Cup from a couple years ago when the Red Wings won the Stanley Cup, all right? Hasn't been so good for the Red Wings since then, okay? But Johan, in this example, okay, is demonstrating an idea that I want all of you to think about, again, before you even start your internship, of the goal, okay? The goal is to get to his place on the ice after a certain number of games in the regular season or the postseason and to hoist that Stanley Cup, to win the championship in the National Hockey League. That's his goal, okay? An Olympic speed skater may have a specific goal of earning a specific time, right? I'm using these athletic analogies because they're comprehensible, right? But you can think about your own goal. Is the goal for your summer to experience a new city, like Chicago, right? Or is the goal to experience a new firm that you've never worked for, or a new industry that you've never played in, right? Or to do something totally independent from your studies. What is the goal? The goal here, again, is to win that Stanley Cup. He has achieved his goal. You should think about going into your summer internship, what is your goal? Is your goal to get an offer for full-time employment? Is your goal to meet a bunch of new people? What's your objective? Because once you have that goal, then you start to tailor your activities around it, okay? And that's when you get really purposeful. Because you're gonna see the internship goes like that. It goes so quickly. And the same can be said for full-time. Those first two years that I worked with Deloitte, in a blink, in a blink. Okay? So when you have the objective in mind, you then allocate your time appropriately. All right? Is this making sense so far? A couple head nods? All right, good. So let's talk about this summer, which is not that far away, thank God, because it's too cold. Okay? <laughs> we'll talk about lemonade for a minute. Who likes lemonade? A couple people? I'm a huge fan. Love this in lemonade. All right? You throw in a little Arnold, like a little iced tea, make an Arnold Palmer. It's a beautiful day. Okay? A lot of the work that you're going to get as a summer intern is not going to be all that glamorous. I'm just telling you, okay? It just won't be. Every single day, it won't be the most stimulating thing you've ever done. Or, if it is the most stimulating thing you've ever done, it may keep you up until 3 a.m. because you've never done it before. And it may be totally novel. And you may do it wrong the first time, and the second time, and the third time, right? It may happen, okay? This idea of things not always being glamorous in both a summer internship and or as a younger full-time professional, think of it as the lemons, okay? Sour, okay? Not all that great, okay? You are tasked with transforming these sour things and making them into lemonade, okay? Turning lemons into lemonade, all right? It's, the most, it's a pretty basic idea, okay? You can make the most of these opportunities during your summer so long as you have this goal in mind. All right, when you've got the objective, you're saying, you know what, yeah, I did stay pretty late last night. You know what, yeah, I did screw up on that. You know what, yeah, I didn't proofread that email. I made some mistakes, okay? But if you have that goal in mind, okay, and you're always thinking about the lemonade, what is that end that I'm pursuing that'll keep you focused, all right? One of the other things that you're thinking about as you're starting your summer internship your job, even as a full-time younger professional like me, still true today, okay, is to make the people around you successful, okay? To not always be focused on your own success or your own glory. In fact, never would be ideal, okay? The, the fewer times you're focused on your own success, the better, okay? The more, instead, you are focused on others' success and others' happiness and others looking good and others performing, others achieving, the more you will, okay? The more that you deliver for other people, okay, and you're giving them that lemonade every single time, the more that you will get lemonade, okay? That's the idea, all right? So taking work that's not always glamorous and transforming it into something more meaningful and seeing the end that it's pursuing, and also helping the people around you to succeed, not only being solely focused on yourself. Because you may say, especially if you're approaching a summer internship, this is an interview. They're, they're looking at me. And they're looking at what I produce, and me, me, me. It's all about how I succeed. It's not about you know my teammates. But remember, at the end of the day, those teammates may be the one in that meeting that you're not invited to, right? They may be the ones talking about what it was like working with you, right? It's not all about you. 
okay? It's much more about other people, okay? So let's come to this next slide. I want to sh show you this. This is actually a document. So you're not allowed to take anything from your summer experience with Deloitte. I was a summer intern in the human capital consulting practice. You're not allowed to take any files, any of the things that I worked on for any of the clients, and you would understand that, especially as a summer intern, you'd be really scared to actually do that, right? Because you're fearful you're not going to get a job offer full time. So I didn't. But the 10 things that I did take from my laptop as a summer intern were these 10 Word documents, okay? Which are weekly status reports that I sent to my manager every single Friday, okay? So imagine if you're my manager, okay? And you've got other projects that you're working on, you've got other people that you're managing, you've got a ton of other things on your plate. Oh yeah, maybe you're traveling a lot too, and you've got a sick child at home. You've got all these other things. I'm like way low on the priority. Okay, understandably, okay? If you were to prepare a document like this, and you may not necessarily need to, for your manager that said, these are the things I did that you asked me to do and how I succeeded those, these are the things that I did outside of my job that I thought you should also know about, and it's both reflective, saying this week, as well as next week, because again, it's only 10 weeks that you've got with this company, right? It allows you to have a tangible track record of your performance and also allows them to track your performance over the summer, okay? This specific document, okay, you can read all the line items as you want, all right? But it brings up an even broader topic of having a conversation with your team and your manager about their respective communication style preferences, okay? As an intern, even at that lowest of low levels, you have the potential to manage upward, okay? You frequently hear that phrase in Management 101 and things like that, okay? You sometimes think of just managing down you know, getting people to align behind your vision and so forth, managing up, this is a perfect way to do that. So asking your manager, what should I do to communicate with you? Do you want a weekly phone call for a half hour on Friday so I tell you what I did this week? Do you want a document like this? Do you want an email with bullet points? How should I manage our relationship? How many interns do you actually think ask that question, right? How should I, the 21-year-old, manage our relationship and oh, by the way, you are probably the most important stakeholder at the table at that end of year, end of summer conversation that I don't get invited to, right? What a great way to make a first impression on a manager, to ask the question, how do you want to be communicated with, right? Because maybe they don't want emails, maybe they want a voicemail, who knows, okay? Maybe they want a handwritten note. Ask, okay? Ask the question. But again, the broader topic is communication style preferences between you and your manager, okay? And hopefully the person asks you a similar question, right? <clears throat> Be flexible. All right. Anyone have this professor at some point? Yeah, a couple folks. All right. I'm always a sucker for including Stu Friedman in my slide decks because he's one of my greatest mentors and he's taught me so many lessons over the various years. As Dylan said, I, um, I TA Management 240, which is the class that all of the Management 100 TAs take to become Management 100 TAs. So while they're actually TAing, they take his course. Mm -hmm. Stu's a, a terrific professor. If you guys even just want to reach out to him cold, okay? Stu Friedman, all right? Good person to get coffee with before you graduate at some point, all right? Stu always said to me, okay, when we were TAing or even you know, when we were interacting with Management 100 students at the time, he said, inquire relentlessly. That was his phrase, inquire relentlessly. And the phrase isn't just, you know, what's the weather? It's not that kind of inquiring that you're doing, or what do you want for lunch? It's, it's not about that. Inquire relentlessly is about feedback pertaining to your performance. So every week, just as we were talking about this document, imagine if in the same format or a different format, you were asking your teammates, what did I do really well this week, and what do you want me to do less of next week and the weeks going forward? This idea of soliciting feedback relentlessly. Okay? And not only just asking for it, because that's, that's only half the battle, right? You may feel good, oh, I asked for it, you know, I'm trying to improve, okay? It would be even more powerful if you were to say to the person, hey, I asked you for feedback last week, okay? And you told me that I need to try and improve my public speaking skills, okay? Maybe that's what you, the feedback you gave me. If the next week when I asked you for even more feedback or two weeks later, if I told you the progress that I had made against that piece of feedback you gave me, right? So you told me I need to get better public speaking skills, so I volunteered to lead this conference call pertaining to pen recruiting, and that's one forum where I'm trying to get more confidence as a public speaker, right? You can imagine.